Norman Finkelstein. Well, I think the problem with <clears throat> Mr. Indyk's presentation is he constantly reverses cause and effect. Just as he said a moment ago that it was Hamas which broke the ceasefire, although he well knows it was Israel that broke the ceasefire on November 4th, he now reverses cause and effect as to how the present impasse came about. In January 2006, as he writes in his book, Hamas came to power in a free and fair election. I think those are his words. He then claims on your program, and he claims in his book, that Hamas committed a putsch, his word, in order to eliminate the Palestinian Authority. But as I'm sure Mr. Indyk well knows, and was documented in the April 2008 issue of Vanity Fair by the writer David Rose, basing himself on internal U.S. documents, it was the United States in cahoots with the Palestinian Authority and Israel, which were attempting a, pu a putsch on Hamas, and Hamas preempted the putsch. That, too, is no longer debatable or no longer a controversial claim. Now, Mr. Indyk says that Hamas is reluctant or unclear about what, whether it wants to rule in Gaza. The issue is not whether it wants to rule in Gaza. The issue is, can it rule in Gaza if Israel maintains a blockade and prevents economic activity among the Palestinians? The blockade, incidentally, was implemented before Hamas came to power. The blockade doesn't even have anything to do with Hamas. The blockade came to uh, There were Americans who were sent over, in particular James Wolfenson, to try to break, break the blockade after Israel redeployed its troops in Gaza. The former World Bank president. Correct. The problem all along has been that Israel doesn't want Gaza to develop, and Israel doesn't want to resolve diplomatically the conflict. Mr. Indyk well knows that both the leadership in Cairo, the leadership in Damascus, and the leadership in the Gaza have repeatedly made statements they're willing to settle the conflict in the June 1967 border. The record is fairly clear. In fact, it's unambiguously clear. Every year, the United Nations General Assembly votes on a resolution entitled Peaceful Settlement of the Palestine Question. And every year, the vote is the same. It's the whole world on one side, Israel, the United States, and some South Sea atolls and Australia on the other side. The vote this past year was 164 to 7. Every year since 1989, in 1989, the vote was 151 to 3. The whole world on one side, the United States, Israel, and the island state of Dominica on the other side. We have the Arab League, all 22 members of the Arab League favoring a two-state settlement on the June 1967 border. We have the Palestinian Authority favoring that two-state settlement on the June 1967 border. We now have Hamas favoring that two-state settlement on the June 1967 border. The one and only obstacle is Israel backed by the United States. That's the problem. So, Ambassador uh, Indyk, why doesn't Israel accept this ceasefire? Look, Amy, I was invited on to talk about my book and the Gaza situation. I was not invited on to uh, a debate with Norman Finkelstein, and I'm not prepared to do that. So if you want to talk about the situation, I'm happy to do that. But I'm not here to to be the representative of the government of Israel. You can easily invite somebody on to No, talk. of course not. No, we're asking your opinion. I don't see you as uh, the representative of Israel. But let me well, get well, your— why don't, why, don't, let's, why don't we focus on some other issues, like— uh, um, or the American role in this, or something that uh, Very can good get point. us out of this, uh, Let, this uh, ridiculous debate, let's uh, in get, which he's just a propaganda spokesman for Hamas. You know. Let me get your response to the current U.S. Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, what she said the other day at the U.N. about reaching a ceasefire agreement. Let me play a clip. Thousands of Israelis lived under the daily threat of rocket attack, and frankly, no country, none of our countries would have been willing to tolerate such a circumstance. Moreover, the people of Gaza watched as insecurity and lawlessness increased and as their living conditions grew more dire because of Hamas's actions, which began with the illegal coup against the Palestinian Authority in Gaza. A ceasefire that returns to those circumstances is unacceptable and it will not last. 
We need urgently to conclude a ceasefire that can endure and that can bring real security. Ambassador Indyk, what is your response to the Secretary of State? You are the advisor to the incoming Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. Do you think uh, the Bush administration should now be, the Obama administration coming in should be, uh, pushing for a ceasefire right now? Sorry to make one more correction before I answer. I, I was a, an advisor to Hillary Clinton uh, during the uh, campaign, uh, her campaign for the presidency, but uh, I am not advising her at the moment. So nothing I, I now say should be taken as representing her, her uh, uh, views. Um, I think that uh, it is essential uh, to get a ceasefire uh, in place as quickly as possible. Uh, I think that there is a, a serious effort underway, as you've already detailed, uh, to do that. Um, I uh, hope that it can be put in place uh, before uh, President Obama uh, goes into the Oval Office in, what is it, 12 days' time, and uh, Secretary of State-designate uh, Clinton uh, takes up her responsibilities. Um, if that's not the case, then they're going to need to work uh, very effectively to put that in place as quickly as possible. And, but then they will need to use that uh, as a springboard uh, to undertake a, uh, uh, an effort, not just to try to uh, move towards a resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but in my view, it's important to put that in the context of a new uh, Obama-Clinton-led uh, initiative uh, for a comprehensive peace um, that would also involve uh, negotiations between Israel and Syria uh, and Israel and Lebanon. Um, President-elect Obama has said during the campaign that uh, it would be a priority of his from day one, which I think is um, very important. Uh, but that uh, desire of his to pay attention to this problem from day one has now become a necessity because of uh, this crisis in Gaza, a necessity um, essentially uh, for two reasons. Um, number one, or well, let's say three reasons, number one is to end this conflict after so many years and, and, and so many dead on both sides. Um, but number, number two, um, the, those in the Arab world who want to resolve the conflict with Israel um, have necessarily been seriously weakened by this conflict, uh, this crisis in Gaza. Uh, there's a great deal of anger uh, in the Arab street and in the Muslim world. Um, those who oppose settling this conflict peacefully, starting with Hamas, Hezbollah, um, the Iranian leadership, uh, they, uh, this block of, of rejectionists, uh, have now got the wind at their backs. And uh, uh, it's very important to show that moderation, compromise, reconciliation uh, and, and peace can prevail over the uh, view that they are propagating, which is that violence, terrorism uh, and defiance can uh, achieve a better deal for the Palestinians and the Arabs. We have to break um, for 60 seconds, and we're going to come back. We're talking to Ambassador Martin Indyk, former U.S. Ambassador to Israel. He's currently at the Sabin Center for Middle East Policy at the Brookings Institution. His new book is called Innocent Abroad, an intimate account of American peace diplomacy in the Middle East. Uh, Norman Finkelstein, also with us, his latest piece is called Foiling Another Palestinian Peace Offensive Behind the Latest Bloodbath in Gaza. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute.